Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Once again, I want to give you a reminder to make sure you have good backup strategies in, in place. So uh, today, as we usually talk about software on today and my video in queue that I was planning on doing today is on Firefox policies and hardening guide. And we're going to do that um, next week and the week after. I'm going to split it into two weeks. The first is how to easily um, you know, harden your Firefox in 2022, talk about extensions and things. And then the next week we will talk about policies, how to pull that off in all of your different operating systems. But as I went to log in here, I'm like, well, let me see, where's the policy at? Well, I'm actually not running my policy on this computer for some reason. And I'm like, well, let's go ahead and kick on the NAS so I can pull a copy of my policy file on that I know it's there. Well, my NAS won't boot up. So had to figure out some diagnostics, so I ran myself a little cable here, and uh, I was able to actually get this uh, monitor cable plugged into one of, my, one of my monitors over here. Uh, kicked it on, and it's giving me the error that it can't read the SD card. Oh boy, there's a problem. So what do you do? Well, I figured out, well, is it a seating problem, or what's the deal? And so I pull it out and uh, have a look at the card, and the card appears to have gotten a crack. You can't see it, but I can see that there's a little bit of a divvy there. So it's cracked right down the middle there. It'll just snap right in part. And so the SD card is dead. So what do you do? Well, prior to this, I had locked in one of my safes, <gasps> an OMV Pi backup card. Yes, I can pop this card directly in. It's already been tested and it will work. I'm not sure if I've actually made a backup of this card with my ebook server on there. So I might have to rebuild the ebook server. Low priority for me. I already did a video about it. I have all the instructions about that. So what I'm doing right now before I even plug this guy in is I boot up the disks application on Linux Mint. And uh, I did a full video on this um, not too long ago. Basically what I'm doing here is I've plugged my... Uh, I have plugged my SD card in here. I go up using the three bars exactly as I did on my um, disks video. And I'm just making a copy of it as a disk image, which is going to be a 32 gigabyte file. And then what we're going to do is I have a, another spare SD card here. I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to verify that both of them will boot, and once that boots, I'm going to replace my OMV backup with one of my cards. That way, in the event this happens again, it's a simple matter of swapping out the card. I'm going to lose about, probably about 20-25 minutes in this, but it's simply all of the time is just waiting for the computer to make a copy of the one to move into the other. Technically, I could pull the copy out, the card out, put it in there, and set it in. So I wanted to investigate how did this happen? How does the SD card break inside of a Raspberry Pi? Well, for that, let's go inside of our computer box and I'll show you what I think happened. All right, so in here is where my box is at, which has all of my different networking stuff. It's not usually pulled out so much so you can see quite as well what's in there. So once again, this is my Sierra Wireless uh, Airlink LX40. This gives me cellular internet. These can be flashed to run uh, T-Mobile, AT&T, or Verizon. This is flashed Verizon simply because I get better overall signal around the country. This is my Fitlet PC running PFSense. This one right here, see if I can get that on view or not, is a Raspberry Pi that is running ISP config, and here is my gigabit network switch back here. Uh, let me see if I can get that guy focused back there for you guys. That's the, uh, it's a D-Link uh, switch. Now on the very back back here where you might see this little divvy up here, this little loop, that is where the NAS sits. The hard drive is over here. So what I think happened is as I was running backups a couple uh, days ago of all of the files that are on the system, um, I, was, I was pushing the thing in and out in order to plug in the spare hard drives to make the copy. I think I pushed it beyond my sleeve out a little bit further. 
So it's sitting along the edge of this wooden rail here. And as I was driving on bumpy roads today, I think it went brrr. And what happens is on this model Raspberry Pi with my particular case, it's on here. Um, the card actually sticks out a little bit. I wish it didn't, but it does. Let me, so you'll see that it sticks out ever so slightly. I think what happens is this guy hitting back and forth, it cracked it. So I need to come up with a strategy to protect this side just to make sure that does not happen again. I do not want that to happen again. But this gives you a tip as to why you always want to have backups and have a good backup strategy in place. In this case, we're using disks. Right now I have seven minutes remaining. I popped the guy in, hit the menu over here, made a copy of the whole disk, which is going to be the free space, the recovery, the settings, the boot, the root, the extended partition. And then we're going to flash that onto this SD card, which is the same size card. And we will put one of them back into my backup. We'll put the other back in here and we should be right back online. As I said, losing absolutely nothing but the ebook server. So we'll get that figured out and maybe I'll come up with a better strategy to get that booted. I think that that was running a few problems as well. So, all right. So my card says that it's done and all of my um, partition detail looks correct. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pop the card out set her inside of the pie. Now here's what we're going to do to fix the issue is uh, I had some little Velcro balls loading around. So I used two of the padded sides and I just stuck those on. So those will stick out further out. It'll also pad this guy in the event it beats against the side of that any longer. So now we're going to go ahead. Let me, let me just go ahead and shut this system down here. And we'll boot it up and see if it actually loads this time. So let's see what's going on here. So we have a Raspberry Pi booting screen. So that's promising. Appears to be booting up. And I see Debian loading in over here. So it should, uh, if I remember correctly, it should just uh, dump to a... Uh, login prompt if I remember on the monitor. Don't remember what that's going to do. Once you get this far in building OMV then you pretty much uh, do everything else remotely. All right so it is booting up the proper uh, IP address which is exactly where I expect it to see. And now that that says it should be up there, what we're going to do is I'm going to come on over here and I pulled up my uh, DHCP leases on my main system here. So the line item we should see is the first one up here. Right now it says it's offline. When we refresh this, we should uh, find ourselves online. So now it says it's online. Woohoo! That's the step we get stuck on last time. Let's pull this guy up. We have our login prompt. And we have a functioning open media vault again. So we saved all of that. So. Um, if this were actually plugged into the hard drive, I would see that over there. The last thing I want to see is, uh, okay, so that is all set up. And let me go ahead and look at my users and such. So yeah, it does appear that the ebook server is not on this backup. So that's no big deal. There were some adjustments I wanted to make to that anyway. So that's pretty cool. So there we have it. Uh, a backup strategy got us exactly where we wanted to. We are down here to a Pi login prompt. That's exactly what I would like to see. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this guy down and put it back where it needs to go. And now we can get on with our day. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. 
Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.